Well, the finance sector is taking a much closer look at how technologies are going to be playing a potential role in their operations in the years ahead. Things like artificial intelligence, cyber risk are more on the agenda of many experts in these areas. And so the Wharton School is going to be hosting a conference this week about some of those potential concerns. Wharton finance professor Itai Goldstein joins us to talk about the conference and as well uh, some of these issues and why the conversations are more important in this day and age. Great to see you again, Itai. Thanks for coming up. Great to see you, Dan. So let's start about just the, the, the element of AI in your area in finance and the potential impact you think that it might have. Yeah, great uh, question. So AI is now a very hot topic. I think hot topic across different fields and certainly has a big effect on finance. If you ask where finance is going to be affected, it's probably going to be affected across the board. So different areas of finance will be affected. I don't know that there is an area of finance that will not be affected. So it's it's really uh, a systematic uh, effect uh, across the board. And you know, when we put together this conference in collaboration with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, um, we really tried to cover uh, all of it. Uh, so uh, there, there will be a discussion on how it affects financial markets. There will be discussion on how it affects uh, firms. Uh, and when it comes to firms, you know, those that are uh, probably more exposed are those that have uh, labor uh, that is uh, working on tasks that are potentially replaceable by AI. So all this will be affected and will come up at the, at the conference. And so part of this, I understand, is out of some research that you have done, uh, looking at the component of AI and at times how it could potentially impact something like trading. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we've done work uh, together with uh, Winston Du, who is a uh, uh, in the finance department with me, and Yan Ji, who is in the Hong Kong uh, uh, University of Science and Technology. Um, basically, what we did was to think about how AI traders are going to affect the equilibrium in financial markets. Uh, you know, everyone is talking about AI algorithms replacing humans uh, in uh, trading. Um, and one thing that is nice about AI is that you can actually go out and check uh, by just doing the experiment. Uh, so, you know, wh when you're thinking about humans, uh, then if you want to get an answer of how will they behave in this situation, you can either do an experiment, but doing an experiment with humans is not that easy. You have to uh, recruit uh, 20 students, put them in a lab, give them instructions, see what they do. And there are all these concerns about who is going to participate in these experiments and whether it mimics the real world environment or not. With AI, you can actually do the experiment fairly easily because right. there are no humans involved. So right. basically what you do is you just program these AI uh, traders uh, you program the financial market environment, and then you let them act, and you see what happens. So, you know, the AIs that uh, we are looking at in this paper are the reinforcement learning uh, AI. Uh, you know, the sub-category uh, of that is known as Q-learning, which uh, is uh, very prominent uh, in, in the industry. Basically, what they do is uh, they are just trying to maximize their payoff, and they don't know anything about the environment, who they are trading against. Right. Uh, the only thing they know is uh, they have a set of options. Uh, every round of trade, they pick one option, and then they update. You know, uh, this was the state of the world. This is what I did. This is what I got. And they right. have these huge metrics of state of the world, action that I took, and then they keep updating. What do I get for every combination of state of the world and action that I took? Right. And, and they kind of learn as they go. Uh, so over time, they become better and better and uh, they know how to choose the, the right actions. Now, <clears throat> you know, the system is such that they have to experiment, so occasionally they would try something new and see if, the, if it works, and then they update, but eventually they converge to what they learn is, is the best outcome. Uh, so we did that, we, run, we ran this experiment, and we found very interesting results that in some cases, and we uh, identified those cases, they converge on collusive behavior. So, you know, what you would like is traders in financial markets not to collude. You know, when they get information, they just trade on the information. Right. The in information immediately shows up in the price, and then the system is very efficient. A collusive behavior is they get the information, but they don't trade so quickly on it because they realize that there is bigger long-term gain if they are not uh, trading very aggressively. Um, and, uh, you know, there are all sorts of theories about when humans will collude and so on. What is interesting is these 
very basic algorithms that I just described to you end up in what looks like a collusive behavior where they just don't trade very aggressively and they end up with higher profits in the long run as a result. Right. Should we be surprised that there is this element of collusion potentially involved in AI? Because I think most people would think that that term really associates with how human beings act. Right, yes. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's a great question. You know, why do we see AIs uh, ending up in this most sophisticated behavior that we tend to expect from humans? Uh, and people have looked at AI collusion in other contexts. Uh, so there are sort of simple experiments that have been done in much simpler contexts. Um, and people have seen this kind of behavior uh, emerging. I think what was more challenging and really the motivation for our paper is to see whether it can also emerge in a financial market environment because a financial market environment is much more complex. Right. Uh, you have noise traders, right? You have all these uh, noise shocks uh, hitting the trading process and affecting price, so collusion could become more difficult. You have a market maker, so some someone out there is observing all uh, the trades and decides on the price and sort of acts rationally. So when you let all this interact, the question is whether collusion still uh, still emerges. And, and we identify two types of collusion. One is sort of based on a price trigger uh, punishment, if you want. Right. So the idea is that if I am an AI trader and I see the price going beyond uh, a bound that I expected, then I realize that you know, maybe I should also act aggressively. And, and this punishment is what maintains the collusive behavior in equilibrium. Uh, we call that artificial intelligence in the sense that they are acting uh, intelligently, but this is really artificial. Uh, but then there is also another type of collusion which we uh, coined the term, you know, artificial stupidity, which is that uh, they really end up colluding because they don't realize that uh, if they deviate from collusion, they can actually make a higher profit in, in the short term. So they just got used to this kind of less aggressive behavior, and that's right. what they end up doing. So the importance of doing the conference right now, and you obviously you talked about the partnership with the IMF, uh, I guess we're coming to a, a kind of a, a critical mass point here on a lot of these issues around AI and obviously things like cybersecurity risk and how they can all factor in, correct? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we started the collaboration with the IMF last year. Uh, so this is a collaboration between uh, WIFPR, Wotan Initiative on Financial Policy and Regulation that I'm uh, the director of, uh, and we are doing this conference with the IMF. L last year we did a collaboration. They wrote the Global Financial Stability Report on non-bank financial fragility. Uh, I worked with them on that, and we said, you know, let's just do this uh, conference to highlight the issues that are coming around non-bank financial stability. Conference was a big success, and we said, you know, we can think about it as an annual event. Every year, the IMF is producing this global financial stability report, and they identify new issues that are on the agenda of financial stability, and we can do the conference around that. And this year, it happened to be cybersecurity and AI and how they affect financial stability. So they wrote the report on that. I think it's getting uh, worldwide uh, attention, uh, and, and that is a good opportunity for us to team again with them and do the, the conference on that. So this, these are certainly issues that are high on the agenda of policymakers. I, I, we talk so much, I, I think, in our perspective about what's going on here in the United States, but from a global perspective on the IMF, these are issues that they are dealing with and have to be focused on on a daily basis, focused on different financial systems all across the globe. Yes, absolutely. So that is the mandate of the IMF. You know, the IMF is kind of an international organization who is trying to coordinate uh, financial policy, macroeconomic policy around the world. Uh, I mean, their, their direct activities are basically giving money to countries in trouble, but they also follow countries, uh, follow emerging risks, and are trying to provide advice and, and guidance as to what policies should be undertaken. So AI is certainly a global issue. I mean, there, there, there are no borders to it. Is there, while there's a concern about the level of risk, there obviously has to be a level of optimism about what AI could bring to the development of financial systems as we move forward. Yes, I think that is absolutely uh, true. You, you know, I mean, w when we think about AI, I think we have to start from the opportunity. 
because AI was not developed to destroy the world or make the world unstable. Right. Uh, AI was developed because uh, there is an opportunity to make things better, to uh, have things work more efficiently. Um, and we see that, I think, uh, across the board, that AI is very powerful and can do things uh, very effectively. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to financial markets, yes, the, the idea that there will be this algorithm out there that can process all this information very quickly and trade uh, certainly can uh, lead to improvement. Uh, but at the same time, as we see that developing, I think it's critical to keep an eye on the emerging risks. Uh, and, you know, one, one risk that everyone uh, highlights when it comes to AI is that AI is just going to replace humans, uh, maybe cause massive unemployment. Uh, maybe when they uh, take over from uh, humans, they start controlling the system, and then who knows where we end up. So right. this is a major risk. Uh, you know, the, the thing I talked to you about is, is not as extreme as that, uh, but also something to take a look at. You know, if you have all these AI uh, algorithms out there that are running the trades in financial markets, are they going to end up without directly communicating with each other? Are they just going to end up colluding and limiting competition? So that is another form of risk that we have to think about. What, what do you hope that, that people will take away from, from the conference? So I, I think it's an opportunity for people uh, to uh, come together and talk about issues uh, that are now on top of the agenda. Uh, it happens to be AI and cybersecurity and how they affect financial markets. I think it's really about understanding what new dimensions of risk are there that, that we have to, to look at. Um, the, the conference features six papers uh, on, on these topics, AI and, and cybersecurity, but there are also panels. Uh, there is an academic panel, there is a policy panel, so people are going to talk about what they think are the main issues right now and what we should uh, look, uh, look for. I, I think this interaction between academics, policymakers, and uh, people working in the industry is very important. It's really uh, an opportunity to exchange ideas and get informed about what is coming uh, on these dimensions. Great to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Itai Thank Goldstein, you. Wharton Finance Professor.